everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Dina and my channel is A Catholic Wife. In today's video, I wanna share with you some tips for newcomers to the Latin Mass. So if you have any reservations about attending the Latin Mass, I hope to dispel them in this video. So let's get started with tip number one. The first thing I would say is put it out of your mind that you have to know every single detail of what's happening. And this is really hard to do, especially if you are a person who has been familiar with the ordinary form, because we know everything that's happening. We can see the priest, we know what he's saying, we just automatically expect what's going to happen next, we know all the prayers. But there is a mystery that is happening in front of us. And there is, in my experience, no greater way to experience that mystery than in the Latin Mass. So just kind of relax into that knowing that you're not going to know every single thing or be able to hear every single thing that the priest is saying. Now it isn't a mystery in terms of there's no way that you can find out what he's saying. You know that, that it's a secret club and we can't know. If you have a missile with you and you follow along in the missile, it has every single prayer that the Father is saying. So you might not be able to audibly be hearing him pray out loud like you're used to hearing in the ordinary form, but you have it in the Missal and you can read along with what he, what it is that he's saying. And it'll be in both Latin and in, in the vernacular. So if you have a English Missal or if you have a Spanish or whatever you have, it'll be in both forms. So in the Latin and then whatever it is, language it is that your Missal happens to be. The second thing I would recommend is get a Missal. Now, your parish might supply the, um, maybe you have seen, and I'll insert a picture here, of the red paper missiles. You can also get those on Amazon. I will link some information below on where you can get a missile. Now, we knew that we were going to be going to the Latin Mass. That would be our primary Mass that we would be attending. So we purchased the missile that I will insert a picture here for you the missile that we have, and we have one for everybody in our family, and that has definitely helped. It has helped me learn the Mass and what's going to happen, because in the, the missile that we have, I think it's by Angelus Press, they indicate on the sides of the missile exactly what's going to be happening in the Mass. So it'll tell you, okay, Father's going to be kneeling, Father's going to be blessing himself, he's going to be genuflecting, this is the prayer that he's saying, he's going to say this particular part in a slightly raised or audible tone so you'll be able to hear it. And I just look for those clues because frankly, I mean, I've been doing the, the Latin Mass for the past year and a half, two years. So obviously I have a lot to learn still, but it has been so helpful to me to be able to see the Missal and look for clues as to what Father's doing for me to keep up in case I missed and I kind of got out of sorts as far as where we are in the Mass. And the more I go and the more familiar I am, because it's something that you have to kind of learn. I mean, I have been Catholic for the majority of my life, obviously, and that's the Mass that I'm familiar with. That's the Mass that I know. But the more that I go to the extraordinary form, the more I learn what's gonna happen, I know what to expect, but the missile has been instrumental. So if you are going to seriously consider going to the extraordinary form, I definitely encourage you to invest in a missile and get the one that is at least 1962. My girls have vintage missiles, one that is from my great grandmother, and my other daughter has one I found on Etsy for her and it's really beautiful. My one other daughter uses one from a great aunt and they love those and those are before 1962. So there is a lot of um, really rich and beautiful prayers and those are the ones that they use. But my husband and I and our oldest daughter use the 1962 Angelus version of the Missal. The next thing I would recommend for a person who has never been to the Latin Mass, now I think that this is a little bit, depends on who you talk to. We started out going to the low Mass, kind of like dip your toe in and see what, what it's all about. And there are a lot of similarities, but there's a lot of differences between the high and the low. Now the high Mass is, you're gonna get all the bells and smells. So you're gonna get incense, you're gonna get the asparagus where the priest will come down as soon as he goes up to the altar he turns around he has holy water and we get that in the ordinary form but that really doesn't I mean it obviously doesn't happen in every mass but only at certain times will you have that but this is every single high mass that's gonna happen so he's gonna go down 
both, you know, he's gonna go down the aisle and he's going to bless each side with holy water. So that is something that um, happens in the high mass. Low mass, that does not happen. In the low mass, the scola is not going to be singing while the priest is praying. But in the high mass, a lot of times you will have the scola, they're gonna be singing, you're going to be um, listening to that while the priest is doing something different. So that's a little bit different, even when you're looking at the missile, the scola will be singing like the introit or something like that, and then the priest is gonna be praying something different. So it's not like a, it's not gonna flow exactly like the priest is just gonna be doing this one thing and nothing else is gonna be happening. In the high mass, there's things that are happening. You have to kind of just familiarize yourself with what to expect. You can still follow along in the Mass. And again, the more you do it, the more it's gonna just kind of be second nature. But I just wanted to give you a little heads up that that is something that is different between the high and the low. So if you're a little bit hesitant to, or if you're a little nervous about going to the Mass, you might wanna start with the low Mass. It's easier as far as less things happening and you can kind of just ease into it before you jump full into the high mass but the high mass is definitely my preference i love it i love all the incense i love all i love the just all of it so the high mass is where my heart is but the low mass is beautiful too so depends on preference on what you're looking for but those are the main differences i would say number four is just learn the different parts of the mass now the ordinary form we pretty much all know that and we can kind of just say that you know we know exactly when to stand and when to kneel and when to bless yourself and when to do all the things but in the extraordinary form especially if you're brand new you're not going to know exactly how it's going to flow and you have to do a little bit of work and learn it now you can of course not do that and you can just go there and just be present and not have any concern as far as how the mass is going to flow but to me, to get the full fullness of worshiping the Lord properly, I want to know what's happening in terms of the prayers, what I need to be doing, what I need to be, you know, I want to be fully participating in the Mass. Now, just because I'm not audibly responding to things like I am familiar with in the ordinary form, that doesn't mean that I am not actively participating. And that is also being, you know, when you familiarize yourself with the Missal, learn the parts of the Mass, that definitely helps that situation. So definitely familiarize yourself with the parts of the Mass. And one thing I would recommend, and I recommend this book if you are seriously considering going to the Latin Mass, is pick up this book here. Now this is the Latin Mass Explained, and this book, we purchased this book when we first thought about going to the Latin Mass. And I'll be, I'll be honest with you, a lot of this didn't make a lot of sense to me at the time. So I was almost intimidated to the point where I just didn't want to pick it up because it was too much for me. But if you're a person who likes to read through things and understand, this book is invaluable. Now that I am familiar with the Latin Mass, I get so much out of this book because now I really understand because I, I am familiar with it from attending the Mass and now I can kind of have the why that I, I it was almost over my head a little bit um, when we first started. So this book, and it's available on Amazon or I'm sure your bookstores or what have you. So it's the Latin Mass Explained. Definitely recommend that. Another thing that you can do to kind of familiarize yourself is watch YouTube videos. Watch videos. There is a link below of the training that um, was the first Latin Mass exposure we had to the Latin Mass. My husband looked it up online and it blew our mind. It was so detailed as to what happens in the Mass. So that, if that's something that would be interesting to you, I'll link it in the description box below. Check that out and I will also insert it in a card here so you can check out that video just to see what is happening as far as, it's, it's a, a video, it's actually two priests, but the one priest is celebrating the mass, he's offering the mass, and the other priest is helping and it will give you a lot of information. And I will also just give you some resources in the description box below of different things that might help you in doing some research and trying to figure out what you need to know about the Latin Mass. Another thing is it might be helpful to just learn some Latin words, like learn the different meanings of what it is that you're saying. You know, a lot of these words we have said before, you know, like the Agnus Dei, you've said the Kyrie before in the ordinary form, and just learn what they mean. And that has definitely helped. My girls are in their homeschooled, but they have had Latin class for the past three years and they have learned so much Latin. So that has definitely helped them and they help us and explain things and different um, things about 
the Latin language that we just don't know. So that is definitely something to consider, maybe learning some of the words and what they mean and how to pronounce them properly. Another thing I would just say is be patient with yourself. I mean, don't feel like you have to just know exactly, you're gonna stumble. You know, when we were first going, we had a few people that we would watch, you know, people that were very seasoned Latin mass attendees, and we would just watch them. So when they would stand, we would stand. When they would genuflect, we would genuflect. And we were kind of awkward for a little while, and we still probably can mess up here and there. But just surround yourself kind of I always tell people just sit kind of in the middle to not the very front don't sit in the far back because you want to be able to see enough of what's happening just to familiarize yourself with what's happening in the mass but you want to have enough people around you that are able to know the cues in the mass when we're going to do what we're going to do and if you get lost in the missile just set the missile down and just be present and don't worry don't stress about the missile it'll come it'll take some time just grace, grace upon grace. Just have grace with yourself and just kind of relax and allow yourself to just kind of take it all in. And the being able to have mastery of the Latin mass, it'll come, but just don't stress about it. It, it will definitely come. Another thing that I would recommend is pray with your priest during the mass. You know, we might not be audibly saying the prayers, but there's nothing that says that we can't read the prayers that he's saying. I just try to follow along with what he's doing. So whether it is a time when we're gonna be saying something, or maybe it's a time when he is praying to the Lord and you can't even hear the words that he's saying, you can pray that in, in the Missal. So I definitely do that. And I would also suggest that you just pray for the Latin Mass and just pray for the holy priests that are trying to keep this alive it is such a beautiful way to worship the Lord, and it is not in any way, and I, I can't speak for all the people and all the things and all the circumstances, but I will just speak from my heart to yours, is that in no way are attending the Latin Mass is us thinking that we're better than anybody else. I just wanna worship the Lord in a way that I think is respectful of Him and what He is owed, and. If I can share what I've learned with other people and it helps somebody else or gives them courage to go and try and not be afraid, then that's great. And then what the purpose of my channel was actually you know, came to pass and I'm happy for that. But please don't ever think that anything that I say here is my attempt of saying I know all the things. I don't, you know? And if I have made a mistake and if I have said something incorrect, please forgive me and please share with me below so I can learn. But it, my heart is for the Lord and for his church and just helping other people grow closer to him with the things that I've learned, ways that I've stumbled and gotten things really wrong. And that's all that it is. So I am praying for you all. I hope you'll pray for me. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, maybe subscribe to my channel to let me know that I'm on the right track. And if there are any videos that you are interested in me covering on my channel, leave them down in the description box below. I also have my email available, so if you guys are more comfortable with emailing me, feel free to do that. It's just dina at acatholicwife.com, so feel free to shoot me an email, comment down below, subscribe and like this video, and share it. Share it on your other social media platforms and hopefully uh, I'll continue to grow on this channel and get better and bring you guys content that you wanna see. So please come back for the next one. God bless you all, and I'll see you next time. Take care.